Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at these things. Now, these are shaver sockets or shaver outlets, and these are fitted in UK bathrooms, mainly because we're not allowed to have normal socket outlets or receptacles in there. And by bathroom, we're meaning a room that has a bath or a shower in it, not the North American description of a bathroom, which of course is something uh, rather different. So uh, you get these things, and uh, they're not just a socket on this side, because they've got all this business going on on the back, which we'll have a look at in a moment. Now, originally you weren't allowed to have any kind of sockets in the bathroom apart from those. Now you actually can, but unfortunately you have to have them at least 3 metres, or about 10 feet, away from the edge of the bath or the shower. So in reality you can't have them because most people don't have bathrooms that large. But if you do, then you can, in theory, have a socket, uh, provided it's uh, at least 3 metres away. So we're stuck with those things. And uh, unfortunately that's uh, still the case in uh, 2020 and has been pretty much forever. Now what we've got here is a fairly typical example of a shaver socket or a shaver outlet. This is a fairly old one, it's uh, from the 1970s. Nova MK with the old oval logo there. And this actually has switches on the front as well. A lot of the newer ones uh, don't have those, it's just uh, either on all the time or on the better ones it turns on when you insert a plug there. And this one has a switch for two different voltages, so we've got there. 240 and 115 and again on some of them it has a switch and others it just has two sockets there sometimes they overlap so you can only use one at a time which is important as we'll see later but uh, suffice to say this is pretty much the only socket outlet you're allowed to have in a UK bathroom and that has been the case for decades or about pretty much forever now this thing is not just a socket outlet and the uh, different voltages kind of give away what's on the back and what is on the back is a transformer and this is actually an isolating transformer so the deal with this is your circuit wiring goes into the terminals on the back here so neutral there, line there and there should be another connection somewhere yep just at the top there and uh, that goes into this transformer and then what comes out on the front can be the same voltage so 240 in the case of that one but crucially this is then not referenced to earth or ground so that uh, if there was a fault here and you came into contact with one of these conductors say because the wire was loose or water got in the shaver or whatever else, then you're not going to get a shock. The only way to get a shock from these is to come into contact with both of these things at the same time, which of course is extremely unlikely. So big transformer on the back there, just for the fact that it needs to be isolated from the normal main supply. And they usually have this dual voltage thing, simply because it's easy to make a transformer with two taps off of it. Basically it's the same transformer, just has an extra third connection coming off somewhere along the middle of the winding. And gives you the uh, reduced voltage should you need it. So 240 and 115 on this older one. It'll be 230 and presumably 120 or something on the newer ones. Neon indicator in the middle here. Shaver only, which is important because uh, these things have a fairly low power rating. And the two fixing screws there for a standard arrangement for UK items. Now this is a fairly old one and I've chosen this because it comes apart quite easily. It's been apart before and uh, we'll have a quick look inside, though there's not a whole lot to see. The new ones are essentially the same construction, transform on the back and the terminals, but a lot of those are riveted together or fixed together in ways you can't easily undo. Now in terms of what you can plug into these, it's extremely limited because the current available from this is actually very small, and uh, have a look on the back of this one. We should be able to see here the actual rating. 20 VA, or at, uh, 240 volts, so uh, 20 VA, that's volt amps. If it was a resistive load like a uh, light bulb or something, it would also be 20 watts. And that is the absolute maximum you can get from these things. And on top of that, uh, a lot of these are only rated for intermittent use. Some are rated continuous, but a lot of them just intermittent there, so it's not only 20 watts. You can only plug it in for, say, a few minutes at a time. And if you go over that, this transform will overheat and it will either then set on fire and uh, burn the house down, or it may have a thermal fuse inside which will uh, melt through and disconnect the power, and then it simply won't work anymore. And because the thermal fuse is usually embedded inside the windings, you can't replace them either. So uh, because of that, and you don't want people plugging their hairdryers and things in here, then you have a particular plug to go in. Now there is an actual shaver plug which is used in the UK. It's similar to a Euro plug, just the two pins there. These all have shutters, or they uh, certainly should do. And again, it just uh, shoves in like that. This one's a bit wonky because it's been apart before and is uh, slightly damaged. But uh, essentially that's what uh, goes in. 
Originally shavers only, but a uh, popular thing now is to plug in your rechargeable toothbrush in there as well. And if you buy one of those in the UK, it comes with that uh, same type of plug on it. So uh, it's basically just for shavers, and originally it was the plug in and use it and unplug it and take it away, but of course mostly now it's the uh, rechargeable ones, and of course those rechargeable toothbrushes. The new ones uh, in some cases do say toothbrushes on the front as well. But important to realise it's only that 20 VA rating. A lot of these do get fairly warm or even hot when they're in use, even with the uh, proper loads there. So uh, just be wary of that. And the other thing to look for when you actually buy these is that if it's got a switch on the front, well, that's fine. You can obviously turn it on and off. Some of them which don't have a switch have a switch as part of the shutter mechanism. So it's basically off. When you plug it in, then it will turn on. And then when you unplug, of course, it will uh, turn off again. Some of the cheap ones don't, which unfortunately means that the transformer is energised all the time. It's permanently warm and uh, can discolour the faceplate and uh, in some cases cause it to crack. Now most of these outlets also can take other types of plug. This one will take the two flat blades. The idea if you've got, say, a shaver from overseas or whatever, you can uh, also plug that in there. So the Euro plug usually fits in there as well with the two prongs, so uh, fairly multi-purpose type of socket. And this dual voltage thing, I say, is mainly there for convenience purposes. Once upon a time there were probably things that only worked on uh, 115 or 120, but most stuff now, say, is a rechargeable type, has a universal power supply which work on pretty much any voltage. And if you've got a choice between the two, whether your thing, say, goes from sort of 100 to 250 volts or whatever, better to do on the 240, because that's actually using the whole of the winding of the transformer, and the current will actually be lower, so there's less losses and it's less likely to overheat than if it was on, say, that uh, 115. And if you're wondering what this is, this is actually a lead from a shaver, and uh, it's got this on the end, and the reason for that is that it can plug into another thing, which is this, and then you plug it in here. This goes in your multifunction tester, and this can shove in the shaver socket so you can actually confirm the thing is working, because obviously you're going to install a shaver socket in somebody's house. It's quite a nice idea to actually check the thing works before leaving and uh, collecting the money. So we'll have a quick look on the back of this one. So there's not going to be a whole lot to see here. And so this one has uh, been apart before. It's uh, slightly uh, damaged there with the plug jamming in. But take the top off here. So this has screws making it nice and easy. So we'll just uh, ease that away. You can see the switches just drop through from the other side. And we can actually see inside here, we've now got the switch mechanisms here, and then there's the socket over there with the uh, actual shutter that goes in the front there. And the switches are just two bits of red plastic, which just fit into the front plate there and act upon these bits in the front. These are the uh, switch contacts here, so these are in the on position, and then when it's in the off position, the plastic piece essentially just presses down here moves those two pieces apart, so on there and off when it's pressed. And then again, the voltage selector here, again, it's just doing the same kind of thing, so that's basically in this sort of connected position. And then when the switch is pressed the other way, it will actually push these down and just break the contact at the back there. As we can see there, so uh, fairly straightforward, uh, just the plastic piece rides on that piece there and either presses on this side or presses over that side to open and close the various contacts. And this side here is where the uh, pins go in. This is one that's actually a bit broken, so it doesn't tend to uh, go in very well, but that one's what it should look like with the three spring contacts on the uh, three sides like that. Now I can see the wires here that come up from the transformer at the bottom. And again, that will just go up to the uh, basically on and off switch and also that dual voltage thing for the socket as well. This is the shutter mechanism. Just a piece of plastic there angled appropriately. And when it presses against the piece in the front of the plate there, so there's various angled bits in there, these are the type you have to actually press both of them simultaneously, which basically pushes it in and then the angle bits will cause it just to rotate out of the way, spring on the back and an angled ramp there, so then it will just uh, snap back into the closed position afterwards. So although your plug goes in quite easily, you do have to have both pressing in rather than just one uh, shoving in and uh, moving it out of the way like that. 
Now I can take the actual transformer off as well. Yeah, there's not going to be uh, say a whole lot to see here, but this will just unscrew. For some reason that's a uh, Phillips screw and these are not, but uh, let's take those off of there. So the new ones are pretty much exactly the same construction. You can't really get away from the fact that you need the isolating transformer in there. And ultimately an isolating transformer is an isolating transformer. They haven't really changed in any way for probably many, many decades because it's just basically a winding around the middle of a core and then an entirely separate winding either over the top of it with insulation between or in some cases sort of two halves of the same bobbin. And uh, that's pretty much that. So. There's the transformer there, so we've got the various tappings off of that one. So we're going to have the mains input on one of the wirings, probably this one at the top here. And then we've got our secondary winding here with the three points off. So one will be a common, one will be the 150, and the other one will be the 240. And of course the primary winding is just the common and the 240 going in. And the only thing here is just the neon indicator there on the back, so just a little strip there shows through onto the front panel. That just lights up when power is applied. Now we're going to have a quick uh, peek under there. It's just going to be one of those little glass neon lamps, so uh, nothing too surprising. Let's move that out of the way. So that's the plate there. So there we have it. Just a little neon bulb there and there'll be a resistor under this uh, blue plastic covering here. And notable that, uh, like most of these that have been on forever, it's gone almost completely black. I found a fairly common problem with these neon things. It still works, but it uh, tends to uh, go dark inside, so most of the light doesn't actually come out anymore. You could chop that off and replace it. They're still fairly readily available. So just the switch piece on the top there. And then the other things here we've got are the terminals themselves for the line and neutral to go in. So terminals on the back here, and then you've got your screws on the top and the side for these, which just tighten down onto those. And now on this one we've actually got two holes for each, so you can put two conductors in, one in each hole, although they both go into the same contact inside. And this one is also uh, made in England because this is an MK1 from the 1970s. And in terms of the shutter there, so it's just that piece of moulded plastic, which uh, presses into this, so there's the holes on the front. So that's its default position. Spring on the back just to provide the uh, spring tension. And like that, it won't actually rotate because it's stopped by the piece of the plastic there. But if both are pushed in, then it can move up against the spring pressure, and then the angle bits will cause it to rotate like that. And then once you remove the plug, of course, there's nothing to uh, stop it from going back because it's on an angled ramp. So as the spring presses it down, it will just press down and click back into the closed position. And if you try and press it with one only, it will just press in a little bit, but it won't rotate because the other side stops it from doing that. So it has to be both simultaneously, and then it will rotate and uh, move out of the way. So look there, a shaver socket. And the most important thing is that transformer on the back, as that is the only type you're actually allowed to fit in a UK bathroom. Now you can buy this style of outlet with no transformer on the back, and those are not suitable for use in the UK. They can, however, be used in other countries where they don't need the transformer, which is why they exist. So uh, if you see any of those available sale, don't be tempted to buy those and just fit them in the UK bathroom because they don't comply with BS 7671. And you do need that big uh, fat-ended transformer on the back, which unfortunately means these are rather large and cumbersome and a uh, great big size thing like that just for a single outlet. And because this is an isolated transformer, if you want to have more than one outlet, you need to have more than one of these. So unfortunately it means one of these and another one next to it with its own individual transformer. And there are no double adapters either for this for the same reason, because the whole point of it being isolated is it only supplies a single item, because the chances of a fault occurring on a single item where you can get access to both of the conductors at the same time is incredibly small. But as soon as you started plugging in adapters and all kinds of other things for having multiple items connected, then of course it only takes one fault somewhere, it's not isolated anymore, then a second fault uh, is where you get a shock from it. And the other thing with these is of course there's no double adapters either, because again 20 watts maximum or so, so clearly uh, it's designed for a single item only, and even in that case it can still be overloaded, certainly with uh, certain higher powered items, such as the uh, shavers which you plug in and only use for five minutes, but uh, so most of those are fortunately long gone.
So that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.